Hey everybody, my name is Alex with Hake Hardware, and in this video I'm going to talk briefly about port forwarding. So this is something that I often have to do with applications on my network, and I typically have to do this for peer-to-peer -peer type applications that need to accept incoming connections from outside of the network. So typically how port forwarding works is it allows services that are located inside of the local network to be accessible outside of the local network without exposing all the ports. So what happens is you might get a request from outside of your internal network, and that request is sent to the public IP of your router. Now the router checks to see if there's a forwarding rule for that specific port. And if so, it looks up what it needs to do, like where it needs to send it. So in this case, we have a rule set up that says requests from any IP. So let's say you have a bunch of peers outside of your network. It doesn't matter what IP address it's coming from. You're going If it's on the right port, you're going to forward it. So the next thing it's going to do is see, okay, port 1234, that port from any IP we're going to forward it to this specific internal IP address. So what the router does is it takes that packet and sends it to 192.168.1.100. Now this is just an example. Uh, your internal IP addresses might be a little different, but the point is uh, it's going to take that packet that's sent on port 1234. It's going to look up the rule. It's going to know where to send it, and it's going to send it to that port. So this just ensures that that connection can be made reliably. So how to actually forward ports, it's usually pretty easy. So because the rule lives on the router, you're gonna to want to log into your router. And a lot of times the username and password will be on the router itself, along with the model number. It's always good to know what your model number is. So take note of that if you're not too sure. And then you're going to want to find the section in your router that allows for port forwarding. So in my case, it's under security, but it might be under a different section for you. Again, it's best to grab that model number and do a Google search, and you can typically get the steps for how to forward your port. And then you're going to create a new entry or a new rule for port forwarding. And there's usually a few inputs, and it's very similar to uh, the inputs for this rule up here. And you're just going to fill those in. So just like I described, from IP, a lot of times it's just going to be any. Uh, you might also have, uh, if you have multiple connections to the internet, you might choose which WAN uh, you're going to be selecting for this port forward rule. You're going to choose your from port, which is typically the same as the to port, and then the internal IP or the to IP. Uh, and here's an example from my Ubiquiti uh, Dream Machine router where I have the forward rule enabled. It's going to use WAN 1, so that's where I have my internet connection coming into my router. It's going to forward from any IP address. It's going to uh, forward on port 3333, and you can see that that port is just going to be identical to the forward port 3333. And then the IP, the internal IP address, is going to be this 192.168.69.100. And then protocol, that could be TCP or UDP. You should look up uh, your app, what it requires, because you, if you only need TCP, you should do TCP. If you only need UDP, you should do UDP. Sometimes you need both. So in this instance, I have it set to both. And then you can use websites like you get signal, and this will allow you to test to see whether your port is open or not. And there are a few common problems that you run into. I think the most common is people with double NATs. And the most common scenario for this is where your ISP router or your ISP modem also has a router, and then you install your own router behind it. So there's two routers, which means if you set up your port forwarding on the ISP router, then when that uh, connection comes in, it's not going to know where to forward it to because you're just going to have your other router sitting in front of it. It's going to try and find that uh, internal IP address and it's not going to be there. So the best way to solve this, in my opinion, is to put your ISP modem or router into pass-through mode or bridge mode. You can Google your ISP router's model number plus pass-through or bridge mode and you should find instructions on how to do that because it's a pretty common thing that people do. 
Another problem that people run into is dynamic IPs. So most routers have DHCP, which dynamically assigns IP addresses to internal uh, computers on your network, and you might not always get the same IP address. So as you saw when we were setting up the port forwarding rules, you have to specify the IP address. And if you reboot your computer or maybe reboot the modem, that IP address might change. And now the packets are getting forwarded to an IP that doesn't have a computer there anymore, or maybe a different computer. So typically when you set up port forwarding, you're also going to want to set up a static IP for your PC. So that again, typically there's instructions for your router online, uh, but you're gonna wanna set up a static IP address that way that computer never gets a different IP address. You always know which IP it's going to have. And then another issue people run into is you saw the protocol listed in there. If you select TCP and you're supposed to select UDP or UDP and you're supposed to select TCP, that can also cause a problem. Uh, sometimes you wanna select both. Uh, it's typically a good idea to only allow the one that you need it need, but you could just select both if you want to be sure uh, that it's working. That's like a good way to test to see if that might be the issue. Another common one is CGNAT, which is carrier grade NAT. You see this on like mobile networks, uh, like your cell phone, you might have the same IP address as a bunch of other people. Uh, rural ISPs, it's, I don't know if this is the right way of describing it, but I think of it as like a public router that the ISP runs that sits like in front of your home network. So it's almost like that ISP modem slash router. Only this is at like a central location outside of your personal house. And then you have your own router at your house. And that's basically like having two routers. It's basically like having a double NAT. And I don't know if that's like the technical way of describing it, but that's just how I think of it in my head. Uh, and what you're gonna typically wanna do is call your ISP and see if you can get a static public IP address or, and I haven't actually done this myself, but it seems like a possible option. I've seen VPNs that have port forwarding capabilities. So you could potentially get a VPN, but the CG NAT is always a pain. And I know uh, I've had issues with that in the past. Uh, and so I just want to go through real quick. I, I know I showed this and it's pretty much the same, but a few things I want to go over and show you using my Ubiquiti router here. So I'm in my security section and I'm in the port forwarding section and I have two ports forwarded. So I have 30.0333 and that's getting uh, forwarded to 192.168.69.100 and then 34.33 and the same IP address. So I have an application running that needs those two ports to be forwarded to it. But let's say I have another uh, computer running the same application and it uses the same ports. Well, typically applications that require port forwarding allow you to specify specific ports. So you cannot forward the same port to two different IP addresses. So in inside here, I'd have to actually create an entry. Let's just call it autonomous 3333. So that was what the other one uh, was forwarded on. But what I can do instead is increase the port to 334. And then we'll just throw it down here. This is the incoming port. And this knows that most of the time it's going to be the same as the forward port. So I can actually just click update forward port. And then I can do 192.168.69.99. So maybe this is the IP address for the other PC. And then I know that I would need both UDP and TCP. Now I have this WAN option up here. So my router has two network ports for an internet connection. And I know that only uh, WAN one is needs to be selected here. So I click add entry um, and now that's okay. So you can't have, again, a port forwarding rule that forwards the same port. And I don't even know, let's see if it lets me Actually, let's do like 98. So it appears to let me do that. I don't know, it really shouldn't. Um, but yeah, this has the same port forwarded two places. So I'm actually gonna delete this because I don't want it. Um, I'm surprised it actually lets me. 
But that'll be it for this video on port forwarding. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, feel free to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.